let's make a high poly shield. Shift F to show me my edges. I'm just gonna to try to make the low poly shield in ZBrush really quickly. If I click any of the default tools and I load them in and I go down to this initialize tab, I can change their settings really quickly, which is particularly handy. I don't like their red material. I like basic gray, but Now I moved this down, but if I go to this preview, you can see it's not centered anymore. And that's a big problem because symmetry no longer works once that happens. And preview tells me when it's wrong. So what all I have to do to fix that is go to deformations and click unify. And what it's going to do, puts it back to the center. And if I turn on my floor, I see that it's actually back to the floor. So if you're having problems with symmetry, shrink this top section in holding alt to get this to the center i don't suggest making a low poly in zbrush it's not the best place to do it i'm just trying to get a base just got to duplicate it rename Little poly. All right. I'm just going to get it smooth. So I'm just going to divide. I don't care that it's doing that. Wait, I might care. No, I am caring. That's not a natural subdivision. What a very strange error. It's because I have it masked and I wasn't looking at it. I'm a genius, that's perfect. All right. Now that's a problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add in some edge loops to keep it, to make it hard. We're just gonna go with B, Z, modeler, and I'm gonna press M. And this tool lets me work kind of like max. I can go over an edge, hold select. I'm gonna say insert, single edge loop. We're just gonna click, let's go all the way around. It's going to keep those edges more crisp. This is not good, but it's okay because what I'm going to do is once I've got it kind of smooth, I'm just going to go to Dynamesh. Don't completely kill it. That's way, 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 way too many. Still way too many. That's better. I need my reference. One second. Because if you're working without a reference, you have no idea if what you're doing is correct. Let's see. Exterior diameter piece of metal, an interior buckler section, and I've got one, two, three, four, five pieces of wood. So I'm going to go up 
and I'm going to transform, I'm going to turn on symmetry, and I'm going to make sure that it's kind of right. So if I press B, M, B, now I want to go to BCB, which is clay buildup brush. And I'm going to go to transform, and I'm going to go to radial symmetry by pressing this little R. And this is a, probably a little low, and it's on the wrong axis. So I'm going to go. And this is one of the coolest tools in the entire world. Like, it's just so cool. Like, just. I know. And how we yeah. used to do details like this is in 3ds Max, we would make the shield and then we would make a piece like this and we duplicate it, spin it around. Every piece had to be made separate. It was so brutal. All right. And the reason I'm getting this many is because I want to mask a circle out of this and I want to make sure that it's a perfect one. So I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to turn its radial count up to something like a ridiculous number. And I need to check my reference again. And it looks like the distance between here and here is the same as the distance from here to here. So if I check this distance, I'm going to use my brush to check. And I'm going to check this way too far. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extract. So I'm going to go to extract. That's not bad. I'm going to hit accept. And this is going to be, and I know it seems ridiculous for me to be naming each one of these pieces when there's like four pieces. But whenever you get to there, there's like 150 pieces, you will thank me for making the name things. It leaves the mask on, so I'm just going to hold shift, just soften it back up, do the same on the back side. And if you ever get a chance, there's shows like Forged in Fire. There's lots of shows where they show you how to make things. You should watch one and just see how long they spend making every piece so that you know how long you should probably spend on it. Because we can skip a lot of steps they can't, but the quality, the time that they spend on every single piece. All right. Let's look at our reference again. I'm just blocking it in. This circle, I think the distance from here to here is pretty similar from the distance from here to here. And so I'm just going to do a quick measurement. And I know this doesn't seem important, but eventually, You'll get a job and your boss will ask you why your stuff looked no good and you'll have no way to answer or fix the problem. And this is how I figured out to get around that problem. Because if I'm wrong, then I know how to fix it. And if I'm right, I can say that I'm right, show it, and they'll believe me. So I'm going to say for me, I'm just going to draw a little eye from the bottom of this to here. I'm just going to scoot it up. And it looks like from this edge to here, but does that give me anything useful? I'm going to try this distance to here. So two thirds of this. So one, two, and two thirds. All right, so I get shield see this distance gives me one two two thirds is here it's still going to be wrong but it's going to be less wrong extract again except Now the shield is arched. It's bowed this way. So I'm just going to go to B, which opens up this brush menu just like clicking it. M, B, M is goes to the move section, and V gives me my move tool. 
So BMV. I just write one of these down every week, so I slowly memorize them because it just keeps being handy. And I'm going to pull up the shield, the whole shield first. Shift it back some, grab this ring. I'm gonna, if I hold down Alt, I can select between the pieces. I'm gonna go to this one. And if I remember right, I had two, four, five sections. So I'm gonna turn off this type of symmetry by turning the R off. And how thick are the boards? Are they equivalent to this? Perfection, that makes it easy. You'll find everything that is aesthetically pleasing is based on copying proportions from other pieces inside of it. And I'm alt tabbing. If I hold down alt, I can switch between my windows rapidly. I'm gonna hide this centerpiece, buckler section. And I'm also going to hide the ring. I need to know S. So the boards are that thick. Second, are they centered? There's one right through the center. That makes my life easy. And I can do this and hope to God that I get a straight line. Or I can just mask like this. And I think I'm going to turn on symmetry. Symmetry. X too thick. That's better. And I'm just going to go extract. Let me go back to this one. Wait. Extract, accept. Now that made a ring. I do not want a ring at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to shadow box. You guys have no idea how each one of these tools when they released it, it like made my entire world. Like I was telling everybody and my wife's like, just, just shut up, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it just does miracles. I want this section filled in. And so I have an object and I'm just gonna fill it in really quickly like this. Automatically does the work for me. Its power is legendary. And I think I'm just going to move this board over. I'm just going to duplicate. I'm going to name it first. Oh, if you catch me making a spelling mistake, please, God, tell me. I always wonder how often people are like, yeah, he's an idiot. It's public school's fault, it's not my fault. Duplicate, W gives me my move, scale this in. Q takes me back to edit. And I don't care that these are a little bit weird because what I'm going to do to fix them, 
because I'm going to stop here and I'm going to go down to Z remesh and I'm going to turn off adaptive and I'm going to turn it down to nothing and I'm just going to hit Z remesh. It's going to give me a square form of this, kind of like that, like a meatloaf. Not a meatloaf, maybe like a stretched out croissant. By turning off adaptive, it gives me closer to the 100 polygons I asked for. Just alt click to select them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide them. And if I go B and I go H, H polish, H polish is what's called a hard surface brush. And a hard surface brush lets me, it'll make edges flat. So if I want to make it more like a board, it's a pretty handy tool to have. Just grab these edges and it'll flatten them out. It's okay that it's like that because I'm just going to pull that up in a second. Flatten through here. Just trying to make them a little more board like. And never divide more than you have to. V is move. I'm just gonna pull it up, pull it out. The symmetry is getting me in trouble in here, so I'm gonna press X to turn it off. But once you turn it off, it's dead. It'll never work again. Care about the back as well. I know said symmetry won't work again. It won't work again anywhere that I put, I moved it without symmetry. making the edges meet at a better angle, more like how real boards would sit. This top end I don't care so much about because it's going to be hidden in the ring. I guess you could have asked if somebody else had a high poly. I wouldn't have made the whole thing, but. It's one of the reasons they should make wood shop mandatory wooden metal shop, There's just something about really messing something up really well and learning how to do it right. 
that can't be reproduced with any other type of schooling. And you could make all these individual pieces in 3ds max and then just make them high poly here no more exhaling you're making me hot if it gets one degree hotter the sprinklers will go off I'll make the other side of the boards. I'll duplicate these over once I've got them right. second. Gotta have some sort of soundtrack. Guardians of the Galaxy had like one fantastic song. So it was like, all right, give me the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. It's like, these aren't bad at all. I haven't heard these since I was a kid. That's what it looked like. Like those trailers just didn't do anything for me. No. That's what happens when you take these indie directors who are legendary, like Bowie Zhao, and you get, kind of put them in these big studio projects. It's just their style don't do that. Mm. It's like the Ten Rings or something movie. It's like it just didn't feel like nothing made me want to go see it. It's like it may have been great, but. I think they probably burned themselves out and getting rid of the spider-man actor is a giant mistake so if we need a new guy it's like what's wrong with the old guy he was fantastic i'm excited sam Raimi is directing dr strange too he's really good what did he direct before spider-man the Tobey Maguire series and um evil dead triple time um, and dark man and uh, drag me to hell dark man i don't know that one is it the old 80s movie? It's the early 90s, the one with Liam Neeson. It was like his first superhero movie that he did before Spider Man. Yep, I have seen that movie. Let's see what we got here now. I'm just going to go duplicate. Let's go to C plugin, Sub Tool Master, Mirror. What on earth did you do? There we are.
You need one? You want to borrow no, one real quick? Just, so this is enough. Now I can start actually doing the part that I love to do. I'm just going to put all this in a folder. Do what? Yeah, the part, this is blocking it out. What I like to do is actually sculpt it to make it look real. Like I could just do that forever. In fact, I burned so much time. And my brain's telling me, stop. No one's ever going to look at the back of that guy's ear or that tiny earring or the shoe that guy's wearing the bottom of it. But I, it's like my brain keeps telling you you're wasting time, do something else. And I'm like, never. Fall into that trap. <laughs> they just have to drag the art from me, like kicking and screaming. It's, like, it's not ready yet. It was ready two weeks ago. I'm just putting it all in this so I can duplicate this. So I have one. I always save here so that in case I mess something up, I can always go back to somewhere. And I'm just going to duplicate this folder. Wow, that was so smart. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so, I did a whole new bag. I actually go into the office once in a while. And I imported different files of information and different name and everything. And I imported it into the assets in Unreal. And it just replaced it and replaced it in Unreal. Mm -hmm. All correctly. If you name it all the same, then you name it. That's. I mean, like the base color and height, like when you come into the sub container, it's the half, the latter half is the same. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether it's like confused that, but that just happened. Hmm. You named the object a different thing, and that's what happened. That seems. Well, the file name was like forward two. So and also the export is not. That's particularly uh, fortuitous because that's not normal how it happens. Normally, you have to <laughs> just never happens where things work out properly. Figure out exactly what you. Did it eat it? No, it's just the lighting. Spend in a couple more seconds making these look more like actual boards. And now I'm going to go BCB. I'm going to give it one more divide. Let's start with the, this board. I'm going to go to layers, alphabetical order, ZBrush. Why can't you do that? New. And what I know about wood is it's striated. That means it's made out of a bunch of different layers that are put together and attached. So I'm just going to fake it with this clay buildup brush. I'm just trying to create some random texturing on it. And the reason I put it on a, a layer, because these layers let me turn them on and off and look at what I've done. And then I can add another layer. I'm going to go to no. BDS. BDS is damn standard and it'll cut a piece. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn up the, I'm going to draw some lines and I'm going to say, okay, I like this one, but it's too powerful. I can turn off record and I can turn that layer down. And so it lets me mix them like Photoshop. But I hate both of these. So I'm just going to turn this up. One more time. And I need to look at my reference again. 
to make sure that I'm not putting details that are not there. I'm going to go back to my BCB, which is clay buildup brush. I'm going to add another layer. All right, that looks good. Whenever I think it looks fine, just zoom back out, get it an angle close enough. I'm just going to click bake all. Now I'm going to go to the next board. I don't have enough resolution. Recording your phone? Yep. Hi, Polly, is part to me the art side of it because it's where we get to be sculptors. And sculpting is one of the few parts in 3D where you're actually an artist again. Because unwrapping, you're not an artist. Uh, modeling, yeah, I guess you're an artist in there. But animating, you're not. Rigging, you're not really an artist. 2D animation, you're definitely an That edge looks all fluffy. And so I'm just going to go B, M, V. I'm just going to push that edge in the center out. And what it's doing is it's going to give me a harder edge. I shift F. And this would normally be a problem. In fact, I'm just going to turn it back down. I'm going to bake all the detail I did on the front. Then I'm going to turn the topology back down. I just want to make sure that it's a crisp, good looking edge. I'm not going to do both sides because we'll be here all day. I want to do them very badly. CB for clay buildup. You need to learn how to use Substance Painter. It used to be that if you couldn't do it in Photoshop, you shouldn't be in Substance Painter, but Substance Painter has become so powerful that. I almost never do texturing in Photoshop because it's so bad at it. And I'll show you why that's the case as soon as I finish this. Yep, that's my plan. I was going to do all of it. I struggled a little bit with the. I got through it, and I, I think the results are pretty good. With some of the textures they did for um, the cafeteria, um, bricks, the stone arch door, the door handles, the hinges, and stuff. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Um, it's very time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, yes. Also, perhaps good because. Sometimes I forget how I save every single file with the name of the file, what I'm doing in the file, the date, and then if it's the first day I've done it, underscore one. And every time I save it, about every 45 minutes, I change A, next 45 minutes, B. And so I was looking through these files. I was working on that good guy. And I'm on day 10, about hour 150. And so it's like, now the 10 is, time in ZBrush, not counting uh, the other things. Cause like whenever I'm saving it and checking through the hours, like how long was I in Photoshop doing references, 
looking at materials, like all the extra stuff. It's like, my God, I forget how long it takes to do these things. And it's still got like quite a bit more time to go. But I love it. Probably about 75%. I just love it so much. Yeah, this is just for me. Well, I use it for the 10 year stuff, but there's international, there's international tournaments that I go to. And that's how you, you make a name for yourself and how you get like you, most people are never going to get to work on a triple A game. There's like one released, maybe two every year. And there's 50 people at max and half of those people are programmers. And so the chances of, you know, half a million artists getting on one of those teams is unlikely but you can work for lots of other video game companies and animation firms. But one of our other ways to do it is to just win big tournaments. And so there's ones that span the entire country and winning those, not only does it give you a little bit of money, but it's pretty nice to be able to say that. It's like, well, I did beat out everyone in New York for this and I did it twice, but now I'm in a different league. The people who made Iron Man are in these tournaments. It's like, damn, they are really, really good. I'm gonna kick their ass. My God, I can't wait. I say that and then they're gonna drop something just godlike that's unbeatable. If I got beat like that, it'd be worth it. Remember that model you showed us last semester? It was a, it was a promo, I think, for uh, Cyberpunk. Character and it had like all these neon colors, and it was like the guns and the highlights. And it, was like, it, was like, it was gorgeous. Yeah, I don't. Really cool. It's a shame that it flopped. I mean, not that it flopped, I mean, it just yep. buggy as hell. Well, they just needed to actually finish it, but Microsoft was like, we have to have a game for the Xbox One, there's nothing for us. So they just pushed out a bunch of just terrible games Mass Effect Andromeda, just garbage. Oh my god. They just buy away with one of my favorite companies and they just wrecked them. Well, that was just Yep. Souls suck out. B H I B H I B H. Give it to me. B H. Whenever you work in metal and a shield like this is going to be made with what's called a flat hammer and they're going to take it to a rounding block that they stick inside of an anvil. Anvils have a little square cut out so you can stick blocks. They're going to hit it with this flat hammer and it's going to put these little indentions so that they can move the metal from the center all the mass into the center so that wherever it's hit the buckler section shifts it off and doesn't damage the wood. Well that hammer is going to leave these little telltale marks little flats like this you probably barely see it with this light but i'm overdoing it by like a nine thousand percent i'm going to switch to a different material so you're adding every object that you um make you know to, the, to that layer by pressing the square button in the layers mm. All of these, the shield is still, still a bunch of separate pieces, so I can work on it. I just put them in a separate layer, so no matter what, I could always do this and go back to my original, just in case. It just happens every so often where you nuke your project, and you want to make sure that you only lose like 30 minutes to an hour. And every single time I get to another step, I just save it, and this is a short cut to saving it properly. I'm going to do the same thing to this piece. I'm going to turn off the symmetry because it's creating a, it would create a really phony look. I'm just going to press X to turn it off. There's no shortcut for this. I would actually spend more time Just need detail to be baked, and if there's no detail, you'll 
see why I'm doing this whenever we get to the texture portion. It's kind of like rigging. Every once in a while, you just kind of have to take my word for why I'm doing something, and then it'll pop up later. about you guys but this state if you've been to any of the others no state has a fall that's as beautiful as this state like not even 10 percent and i've been to the other states colorado? maybe colorado does i've been told that colorado and like a couple other like montana maybe do it's like i don't know new jersey's awfully gorgeous all right now i'm going to add another layer and i'm going to add a patina and a patina is the layer of as metal touches oxygen oxygen's an acid it dissolves it and turns it into a rust layer and that rust layer keeps it from rusting further b d no i want bcb And then you can just turn that layer off and all the textures that you put on that layer will just disappear. Yeah, because what I'm doing is I'm putting them on a little too strongly, shift them back a little bit. And then I can go to this, turn it off, and I can turn them down to almost nothing. Uh -oh. I can also go negative too. Uh -oh. And so it's a pretty handy feature to be able to do Photoshop type effects. Because I want you to believe that the shield has actually been damaged. I'm just gonna... And I would spend a lot more time on this. This will make my texturing job way the better my high poly looks the easier and better my low poly is going to look. Let's just negative these a little bit. And I'm going to make one more. I'm going to go BDS. And I'm going to say that this shield's been hit by axes and swords. So I'm just going to. And you shouldn't do these off the top of your head. I, I do this a lot. so. You should look at the reference and copy it exactly. So that it comes through here. Hits. That tells me that I need more resolution because it's jaggy. hits this piece and bumps up. The buckler does its job and deflects it to the side. Let's add a couple more. And I'm trying to make the shield tell a story. cuts through. If you press S, you can just change your brush size dynamically. Not dynamically, it's not dynamic. Dynamic means constantly changing, but it allows me to rapidly do it. But damn standard will draw a really sharp, fine point. Even if it's large, it's just got a better fall off. This piece of board sticking out there, I'm just going to go B, M, V. I'm just going to tuck it back in. 
BDS back here. Extras. I don't want to put too many. Just enough to give me something to work with inside Substance Painter. And last step, I'm going to put some actual cracks. I'm going to use this damn standard brush and turn it down a little bit. Cracks are complicated. They'd be difficult for me to explain. You kind of have to study what's called the fracture of materials. My God, I could do this forever. I need to stop. Oh my God, just stop. Nope, I just have to stop. We just have to stop. You're fine. I still need to make the back handle. I still need to do the back. But let's just say that this high poly is done. Before I leave here, I'm going to make sure that I go up here and I save because if you don't save, you will regret it because I know the regret greatly. And I'm gonna name it something that when I look back later, I can know what I did. Six objects, ZBrush, high poly, sculpt, 1111, one, this is day one, Save one. Now I've got to make sure that before I export this stuff that I take these bake layers and I'm going to bake all because if I don't, nothing, no other program knows how to use ZBrush's bake layers. I'm just going between them, bake all. Close that folder and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to say duplicate. And this one is going to be shield low poly. LP. And this one's going to be called no UVs. Now, what I want to do is I want to combine all of these layers into one layer so I can make a low poly. So I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to say merge. And it's going to kick out this, which is still made of separate pieces. So I could still do this. But what I want to do is I'm going to use this to make my low poly. No, I just saved, don't do anything. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to delete these subdivisions and I'm just going to go to Dynamesh. Now that's too many polygons, so I'm going to, but it fused all the pieces together. So now I'm going to go to Z Remesh. And it's going to give me the topology that I want. Not that little. A little more. 
That is a lot. One second. And that's a lot for a shield. One second. That's better. There's still a lot of lines that I don't believe that I need. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go B, Z, M, and I'm going to go over these edges. And I'm going to hold down space and I'm going to say delete entire edge loop. And if that happens, ZBrush did a bad job of remeshing it. It's a problem that ZBrush has had for a long time where it makes corkscrews. And all I have to do is hold down Alt and hit Z remesh and it'll give me a different algorithm. Nope, we're gonna do it in max, it's still angry. So I've got this shield and I'm gonna export it. Export shield low poly, no UVs. It's important that I say that it's not just the normal low poly that it has no UVs, because I'll confuse it later and wonder why my bake didn't work. Now I'm gonna to go to my high poly. And I wanna export all of its stuff at the same time. So I'm gonna to go to Z plugin. I'm gonna to go to FBX. I'm gonna turn on my low poly too. And this I'm gonna say, all visible, I want you to export. I want you to export, not for Maya, so I'm just gonna click till I get to max. And I'm gonna say export. And I'm gonna make a new file. Assets. And this is shield group. It's just going to export all of this in one piece so I can go into Max.